ladies and gentlemen, I'm MC Zimmer and welcome back to Space Engineers. This is Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 8. And yeah, as always, I'm bringing you three of the Haas ships and three of the Haas mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the past week. And yeah, I've got definitely three of the hottest ships you'll ever see right now uh, on, this, on this roundup. It's going to be absolutely freaking incredible. They're all right over there. And yeah, you see that big bastard there. That looks sexy. We'll get to him in a second. Right now, we've got to do the mods. And yeah, I've got three awesome mods too. Um, so the first is Small Oxygen, small oxygen Tank by Tumble TV. This is the guy who does all the really awesome azimuth stuff. And yeah, this is the small oxygen tank. I've got a regular ox Excuse me. <coughs> badgers! As Jacksepticeye would say. All the badgers in my neck that day. <laughs> but yeah, so I've got a small... <coughs> okay, so throat. Are we going to be good? <clears throat> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, so small oxygen tank by Tumble TV. It's a small modified one by one version of Keen's oxygen, oxygen tank. It is survival ready and it does have two construction stages so um, pretty much everything you could possibly ever need. Yeah, oxygen capacity 50,000 which I think is about half of the um, capacity of the regular oxygen tank. Um, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty handy for like cramped spaces as you could probably guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's literally, I think, exactly, yeah, exactly half as big as the regular oxygen tank. So, uh, pretty cool for, you know, small, large ships, if you will. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't actually fit uh, on small ships, or it doesn't have a small ship version. So, that really rather sucks. I was sort of hoping to put on my latest Typhoon uh, long distance fighter here, but unfortunately it's not to be. So, yeah, that, that does suck a little bit, but I mean, think about it. I, I, think that pre I think that is outweighed by the benefits it has for like large ships and stations where you can pretty much put it anywhere. Pretty much. Pretty much? Pretty much. I can, I swear, I can English some days of the week. Some. Not today, apparently. Just some. Uh, but, yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say. It's a small oxygen tank that you can only put on large ships or stations, and it's really good for small spaces. So, yeah, that's that, and... Yeah, now we are moving on to Grav Walk by Ozix 0Z1K. These guys, by the way, you'll notice that we don't actually have a gravity generator, a real gravity generator, anywhere on this platform. I think you could probably guess why, but yeah, see, no gravity generator. That's because the blocks. Inertia dampener on, thank you. <laughs> That's because the blocks in the Grav Walk mod all generate their own gravitational field, which is rather cool and sweet for a ship. Once again, like a small, large ship where you don't have a lot of space, so you don't really have anything or anywhere to put a gravity generator. So these guys all generate their own gravity field. Hey, Wally. And, yeah, it's 1G per piece here. So, um, so you could pretty much, like, have just one of these and pretty, pretty much generate enough gravity for a pretty sizable section of the ship. You could just have one of these on, rather, because they can all turn off. So you can just have one of these on and generate enough gravity for a sizable section of the ship because 
they are literally as strong as a regular gravity generator. And these are all, I believe, all of the catwalk pieces here. You've also got the two pieces, which are really handy for ejectors and stuff. And what they do, they actually suck things through them. And you got these little arrows on the sides that turn on when these are actually on. So these uh, arrows turn on, they point in the direction that they're, uh, that they're heading, that the gravity is heading. So uh, you could literally design, well you could design very complex ejector systems through this. You could design pretty much anything. I've got a little bit of a ride over here to show you guys. Make sure my, yeah, my inertia dampeners are on, which is good. So I'm um, turn this guy on. And yeah, it just makes you go really, really fast. So check this out. This is absolutely great. So turn my jetpack off. Yeah. <laughs> that's boss. Like that's boss of Troni right there. We have ended up right beside Siri. Actually, where are we in relation to the... Uh, okay, there we go. I was wondering where we were late in where we were in relation to the mod viewing platform that was kind of weird because usually I don't get lost like that which is uh, which is a little bit odd because well yeah uh, it's a little bit odd because I tried it a couple of times I didn't get lost so that's a bit weird that I got lost that time so we're gonna have you off so we can go over here and check out Estra Retractable Stairs by Sec 10. And yeah, one of these decided to deploy backwards and the other two are upside down because uh, it's really sort of, this is the one gripe that I have with this mod, right? Um, it's really, really hard to see uh, exactly which way up you're placing them so it's easy to sort of place them like upside down or sideways and stuff like that so it's almost impossible to decide to see which way you're putting them so uh, this is the only one that actually pasted in correctly I believe that's hold on let me check here that is um, uh, Esther Strat Retractable Stairs 3 and yeah, these guys actually are retractable. They're not just static and sort of built to look like retractable slide upstairs. They actually are retractable, which is really, really cool. So, I mean, this is, uh, you can almost like build sort of a moat style thing in your ship, if you, if you will. Like with these retractable stairs, you can have a gap here and then sort of just if um, if there's a boarding party on board your ship you could just retract the stairs and make it really hard for them to get across so yeah pretty pretty useful uh, also useful for if you just want to make your ship seem cooler by having a bunch of retractable stairs leading up to a cockpit that would be pretty freaking awesome so let me go over here and I'm gonna bring up the K menu here and scroll down to them so um, to retract the to extend the stairs rather you have to actually close them you have to click close which is weird you, you think it'd be open but no it's actually closed so I'm retracting them all now and as you can see over there that one just retracted or is re retracting so let's go over there and check on them Yep, they're all retracted and all tucked away and pretty badass, you have to admit. Now see, this is what I'm talking about when I say they're hard to see which way up you're placing them. You almost have to get in there and really look up close to see which way up you've placed them. In fact, no, there really is no way to see which way you've placed them. So, I would appreciate if there's something, hold on, 
Okay, those lights. Never mind. I just now noticed those lights are how you tell uh, which way up they're supposed to be. But I'd appreciate something a little bit more apparent. Uh, something maybe on the front of the stairs because that's usually what you're seeing when you're placing them. So, yeah. Uh, when you place them, the lights go up. So, yeah. A little bit, a little bit confusing if you don't know, but yeah. So, yeah, so we're moving on to the ships now. Galente version 1 by GEC. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome ship. It comes in its own world, which caused a little bit of, a, of confusion for me. It's actually a world, not a blueprint. I usually get blueprints nowadays. I used to get... Uh, worlds more often than not, which is, uh, uh, which is what Siri was. She was originally in her own world. So this guy comes in his own world. This is the Galente version one. Yeah, check this out. Look at this. This is a long-range uh, transport ship. So it's actually got room for three people. It's got one guy in the cockpit, and then. We open up the trunk here. It's got two cryopods. Well, technically, it's got room for two since obviously you can't open this cryopod. But so, yeah, if you ever, like, if you're on a trip and you needed to swap out pilots because, you know, you're getting tired or whatever, you just stop the ship and then wake up the crew using the cryo, uh, in the cryopods. And then. Uh, yeah, and then you just swap places. So let me go ahead and close this here. Yeah, and then this is the cockpit. Look, look at this. You're not going to believe the way you get into this thing. It's absolutely incredible. Look at this. Ah! Yeah, it's like it's like something almost out of uh, almost out of Star Citizen. The way it sort of unfolds there. It's really, really, really cool. So, once you're in the seat, you press 1 to engage piloting mode, and then you press 7 to fold yourself back up into the cockpit, and it all closes. It all closes you. It all closes around you. And then, you've got instructions over here. You've got um, statistics on, the, on these three displays here. And then on the right, you've got instructions. So to disengage the landing gear, we're going to press 8, and then we're going to go up, up, and away. And yeah, it's got a lot of power going up. Um, oh yeah, I got to show you this. I got to show you this. I hope it does it again, because I got to show you this. Watch these wings, all right? Watch the wings. If I can just get it down here, just a little bit closer. Don't want to run into the turrets. There. Alright, so. Yeah. Check that out, guys. Ridiculousness. And then the landing gear sort of unfold there. And then press 8 to bring them back. And then watch. Watch the wings. You get up. They fold down. That is so cool. Like, that, <laughs> that is awesome. You have to admit. Um, now, when I, I have to warn you that if you want this as a blueprint, um, when I paste it into this world, it sort of had a propensity for going up and not stopping. So, I had to get in the cockpit and I had to sort of uh, chase it. Well, I had to chase it and then get into the cockpit and then sort of guide it back. Uh, to the mothership here, which we'll get to in a second, like I said. But yeah, it's it's t it's hard to deal with when you first place in. I don't know. I think maybe the thrusters on the bomb may have been stuck or something. I couldn't possibly tell you what was what the problem was. But once you actually get this thing going, it is an absolute dream to fly. I mean, look at this. Look at this handling. The it's just, it turns on a dime. Very good handling ship. Oh, go up, go up. Ooh. So, yeah, we're going to go over here. And 
Actually, I want to see if we could fly through that asteroid. Fly into that asteroid, more like. I don't think there's going to be a way out, but it definitely looks like we could fly through it. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, we could. We can actually go into it and sort of use the hangar, the asteroid as a, as a hangar. That's cool. So, yeah, it's a very small ship, and we can actually fold the wings up if we need a little bit more, uh, if we need it to be a little bit narrower, which I think we will need if we are to get out of here. Oh, yeah. Just such a dream to fly. Such a, such a good handling ship. That's the first thing that strikes me is just how good it is at just turning. Um, we bring the wings in, or bring the wings out. Yeah, in case you in case you haven't noticed, those are solar panel wings. This thing does run off of batteries. Oh, and here's another thing it likes to do. It likes to go downwards. It likes to drift downwards if you don't correct it. So I think that's because of the rotors on the front being just a little bit too powerful or something, you know, having just a little bit too much torque applied to them. So yeah, pretty dang awesome ship, Galente version 1 by GEC. And But uh, like I said, you will have to, uh, if you want it, as just a ship, like a blueprint, you will have to download all the mods first. Uh, so you'll have to open up the world that comes in. You'll have to copy and load the world, then back out of it, then open it up in the world menu, uh, in the load world menu, and then um, go into advanced, and then go into mods, and see what mods it has, and then download all of those. So, a little bit of a hassle to get working if you just want it as a blueprint. Uh, but I think I think it's more than worth it because it's such a good handling ship. Such a so fun to fly this. It's just really, really fun. All right, so let's bring you down nice and gentle here. Um, yeah, there we go, and then. The uh, landing gears are auto locked, so I'm going to open up the cockpit and press T twice to get out of it. And we're going to move on to, well, we are actually going to move on to this ship. Hold on. So this is the Federation Hawk Owl dropship by XO. Um, yeah, in case you're, in case you don't want to download all the mods, this is a blueprint, by the way. So, um, you have to download a whole bunch of mods to get it to work. But if you don't want to download, then there's also a world version of the workshop. Um, it holds one pilot, one co-pilot, and eight more crew members. So, yeah, this is it. And it looks kind of... It looks really, really, well, short, and <laughs> it, it does look kind of, I guess, orbital drop friendly if you were to point it backwards at first. Yeah, see, this is the way to actually enter orbit, well, in anything, and this definitely looks a little bit more streamlined, so you, you just turn it backwards prior to actually getting it into orbit and then counter thrust and then once you're in it doesn't actually matter uh, how aerodynamic it is in the front because you're going to be entering with the rear first so once you're in you just turn it around and then land so yeah it's an orbital drop ship uh, in case you didn't actually pick up on that for some reason but so um yeah it's, it's a ship that's, well, I've listened to this ship for some reason. That's weird. <laughs> okay, that was odd. 
I actually glit glitched into that ship. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, it's a ship designed to look good and be different, which it definitely does both of those. I haven't seen a ship that looks like this ever. Like, it, it looks almost like some sort of sea creature almost, which is not a bad thing. Um, it functions only okay. Uh, the wings uh, have a habit of actually tearing off if you're if you're too abusive, if you turn it too quickly. So there is that to bear in mind. So you can't actually turn it that quickly, otherwise you'll shear the wings off, which is always nice. But so yeah, we're inside of it, and as you can see, very very basic which you'd expect from a dropship I mean it's not like it's not like the Nova yacht and you've got these uh, you've, you've got these airlocks here um, which I wish somebody look if you're a mod creator then please please listen to me please make a small ship oxygen system that would be sick so we can actually have oxygenated environments in small ships because this would be fantastic for an oxygenated environment because it's all self-contained and everything obviously uh, well it does have these guys here so apparently I'm wrong <laughs> well my bad apparently somebody's already apparently Keen's already made it MCZ look up Please. <laughs> but, yeah, so apparently it does have oxygen, although it's saying oxygen none, which is strange. So, yep, you've got room for eight soldiers, and they've got these terminals here, presumably to have a pre-mission or post-mission briefing with some sort of commander or something, and... And then back here you've got two more seats and then two uh, one on either side here and then the two seats in the cockpit so we're gonna hop in here oh well the camera's all weird and everything that's strange um, okay so let's try and go up as you can see it's a far slower ship than uh, what we just saw from the Galente. It doesn't really have to be that fast though because if you think about it, this is more than likely to be deployed from some sort of mothership and the mothership's probably going to uh, be traveling very very fast in orbit around a planet so it would drop this at you know ridiculously high speeds and then it would just have, enough, have to have enough power to slow down once it hits the atmosphere and make sure it doesn't crash and burn. So it doesn't have to actually be that powerful. Um, although I would imagine that getting it actually into the same orbit and you know getting it to actually converge with the mothership would be a little bit of a problem. But yeah, so not exactly the best handling of ships, not exactly the fastest. I don't think we have weapons, do we? Um, let me check on the hotbar here just to make sure. Yeah, um, well, we've got uh, two rear missile launchers. Actually, we've got four rear missile launchers there. Let me check on the other hotbar. Hmm. I could have sworn that those two uh th those two other missile launchers would actually be on the hot bar then so that's strange it would only have the two on the bottom but yeah so this ship pretty uh, pretty cool pretty well almost it reminds me of a slightly less angular complex and well blue version of Siri over there so yeah it just painted a little bit blue in a couple of places and it would be a perfect ship to dock in Siri I think it would actually fit in a cargo hold too so pretty 
pretty cool ship. I have to admit, for a for an orbital drop ship, pretty freaking awesome. I mean, I think they're usually very basic ships. So, mm. and yeah. Uh, so now we are moving on to the Asia class heavy destroyer. I just want to zoom out and get let you get a look at this thing. No, no, hang it! Stop, stop the music! Stop! All right, stop! Stop the freaking music! Editing music! Stop it all! Thank you, thank you. Freaking. Editing MCZ. Uh, look. Uh, why did, Why does he do that? Why did he... Why, what? What? Uh, anyway. So, the Asia Class Heavy Destroyer by Koenig's Cobra. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> look at this sucker. This is the most MLG... No! 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 Editing MCZ, no! This is the most MLG freaking Doritos Mountain Dew awesome freaking looking ship I think I've ever seen. Look at it! It's thin. It's like I said that one ship in the in SEWWR number 7 was a, was like a knife. This is a knife! This is a knife blade. It's just so sharp and pointy and everything. And it looks almost like one of the Star Destroyers from Star Wars, which those are some awesome looking ships. You have to admit, those are, those are awesome looking ships. So let's go ahead and actually get in here. Which one was it that I glitched through? Oh yeah, it was that one. That's actually your entry in egress. <laughs> Through a glitchy glass pane. See, I looked all the way around the ship, and there's there's no door or anything. This is actually your entry and egress right here. So it's a bit confusing, but very hard for boarding parties to figure out where to go. If we can actually get in there again. That was weird, there's some sort of shape there. Hmm. Anyway, so we're just gonna fall through there. Cause why not? And yeah, we're in the bridge. So look at this. I have no idea why gravity is making me stand so weird. But look at this. This is well, it's a weird bridge. It's really, really awesome though. It's very, very spacious. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Look at all these computer terminals. This is an instant nerd gasm right here. Look at all of the computer terminals. NASA, NASA would be proud. NASA would absolutely be proud of this bridge. This is so cool. It's like green and stuff, which is a color I never thought I'd see on a ship bridge ever. Green? I mean, really green? But it works. Like, it really, really works for this, I think. because Just because it's so open. Uh, yeah. It, just because it's so open, it just really, really works. Because I, I think, I feel like green is a good color to use in vast, like, big open spaces. Because it sort of highlights just the vastness and the openness of the space. Obviously, I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> And yeah, in case you're wondering why these guys are here, this can actually be sealed off in case of attack. You can evacuate your crew and you've got a second bridge down here. So you could evacuate your crew, close that up, and then your attackers would probably think, oh, well, this is the bridge, so this is where I'm going to attack, and not knowing that your crew has evacuated down here a couple of stories. Get down there, thank you. And go on actually to, I believe, this bridge in here. Man, 
Um, where is, actually, where is the secondary bridge? I can't remember now. That's, that's great. But yeah, so there's a secondary bridge that your crew can actually go into. Man, the fact that I'm freaking standing sideways is not, not helping right now. Character, please get through the door. All right, hold on. Jetpack. Jetpack solves everything? Yeah, jetpack solves everything. So there's a secondary bridge down here. Eh, it's gotta be down here. There's a secondary bridge down here that your crew can evacuate to. And just, uh, it's actually, I think it's in the core of the ship here. Let me go check. Hmm. I think this should be... I don't know. Well, actually, let's go ahead and just sort of do the tour, shall we? Because this is a lot bigger ship on the inside than the outside. You guys are absolutely going to love it. Like, you guys are just going to love this ship. It's very, very cool and futuristic and everything and awesome. And, yeah, so we've got the, uh, we've got Darth Biomex awesome uh, interior doors here. They allow you to actually see Gain Software House. That allow you to actually see where you're going. And yeah, we just go on in here and just got this big, vast, empty space. Although we do have a med bay over here, and yeah, I have actually toured the ship. It's just sort of where I ended up here, but we've actually got a med bay here actually yeah I thought there were a couple of med bays we've got the respawny sort of med bay there we've got the operating table uh, where Dr. Chagwaz would sit right here so that's pretty cool I hope that ship doesn't actually come and sort of ruin things and then in here is the infirmary where you can have all your patients and they can just sort of lay down and heal like after surgeries and stuff so pretty cool that you've actually got a separate infirmary here um that's pretty rare as i seem to recall that's pretty rare for a ship to actually have separate rooms for infirmaries and um operations so yeah pretty pretty awesome indeed what is this? Um, as, oh, that's an oxygen system. Uh, that's an oxygen, an air vent. Uh, yeah, so that's what that is. I was kind of wondering there. And, oh, okay, so these are the captain's quarters. I was wondering where these were. So, yeah, captain's quarters. You've got your display terminals and everything here. So I guess you could actually pilot the ship from in here if you wanted. If you actually set this as a main cockpit, which is something you can do in the latest update. If you set this as the main cockpit, you could pilot from in here and actually be very, very secure. And you've got your uh, couch here where you can sort of sit down, just relax. This is a comfortable couch, by the way. I mean, guys, like seriously, this is a comfortable couch. Freaking dead tech. Uh, knows how to make couches. Or, no, it's iCaster. iCaster made this couch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Thank you for letting me go there. I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get out of the thing there for a second. But yeah, so. Yeah, it's just a big old nice captain's quarters. I love that pattern on the ceiling. All those towels and squares. Looks awesome and yeah i wonder if there's an xbox one guys it's 2077 and we don't need xbox ones in the future and this game is 2077 it takes place in 2077 this is old very old hardware no xboxes thank you hashtag ps4 for life <laughs> yeah where else was that gonna go? I mean, I've got freaking three PlayStations. So I'm a big PlayStation guy. No Xbox. No Xbox. 
You can take your Xbox crap and go home with it for all I care. We have got two enemies. One of them is freaking closing very, very quickly. Um, that's possibly something we're going to have to deal with. Um, yeah, but for now, let's just continue the review and see. And, and just see if that's going to become a problem. That probably is going to become a problem. In which case, we'll rush back up to the bridge and actually be able to test the, this thing's combat abilities out. So, yeah, and we're in the shower now, by the way. Same shower as always. And, yeah, so very nice, spacious captain's quarters for you to sit down in and browse the inter, the extra web and play your Xbox One and sleep and um, have dressers and stuff. You got sort of dressers and tables there. And, yeah, I'm noticing a distinct lack of a dresser. We need a dresser in here. But other than that, pretty awesome. Man, that guy, that guy is hauling ass. Hmm. He may just become a problem. I do have Invader Script active after all. So through this door, what is it that we have? Oh yeah, I believe this is the engineering bay. Guys, if this is the engineering bay, which it may or may not be. Oh yeah, I just want to, I just want to warn you. If you like sci-fi and if you like technology, you might want to actually, if you don't want to orgasm right now, you might want to turn away. You might want to click away from this video. So, yeah, yeah I mean, Tally, I've got Tally here, um, a figurine of her. The real Tally would have an orgasm, like, instantly upon seeing this, because... Well, first of all, I'm gonna start you off with the with the with the sort of I'm gonna start you off gently here. We've got two huge command terminals here. Look at the sizes of these bastards. Yeah, yeah. And look at all these screens and everything. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to trigger an orgasm. So you, <laughs> I don't know why, but and then over here we've got a. Star Trek Drive Core. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Uh, you, you might want to just go ahead and get the tissues now because it only gets better from here. We've got a Star Trek Drive Core and a ventilation system here, uh, an air vent, I should say. A whole bunch of gyroscopes into your turrets. Look at this, look at this big bastard. Looks, this looks awesome. Like, this looks really, really cool. And then, just hold your horses. Are the tissues ready? All right, good. Now, we've got another one over here. And beyond that, well, we've got a very, well, what I assume is an exposed part of a very, very, very vast and complex, uh, conveyor system here that feeds fuel from a well yeah actually these guys are reactors so um, these guys feed uranium and stuff to the engines and everything and all of that good stuff I oh yeah by the way it looks like we have a Titan engine in here do we I think that I think the main tail is a Titan engine. Let me check that. Oh yeah, this is a Titan engine. Look at this! Look at this huge engine, guys. Fastness, fastness. I always love these Titan engines. They are so bad powerful. Like they are. So, they look awesome, and the power is what? You know what I'm saying? I believe that guy's slowing down. Good. You bet. You better be slowing down. I don't want to have to engage your ass. I, I'm just warning you right now, because if I have to engage your ass, you are going down, boy. Because 
Look what I'm in. Alright. So you might as well just slow down. Hold your horses. And just be calm. Don't make any rash decisions. Alright. Cool. Probably not. But I'm just going to go ahead and take his silence for a yes right now. So we've come out on the opposite side of the ship. Yeah. And that engineering bay actually, well, I believe this is the opposite, the opposite side of the ship. That engineering bay, if that's the case, that engineering bay leads from one side of the ship to the other. So we're here in, uh, this is part of, well, this is a piston of some sort. I couldn't possibly tell you what that piston's for. Yeah, I think he's uh, actually going the other way now. I think he's... Uh, seen my ship on radar or something decide decide that's way too big and then decide to just go the other way because we're actually gaining distance on him. so this I guess would be where you would go to manage the conveyor system being that part of it runs straight through here yeah and as you can see there's another conveyor pipe that runs under here I can only imagine how nightmarishly complex the conveyor system for this ship has got to be. Because it's got so many, so many weapons and stuff, it's absolutely crawling with them. Like, when you fire your guns, if you hit somebody with a mentionable amount of firepower, it freezes your ship. Like, I kid you not. It, or it freezes your game, I should say. It completely hardlocks your game. At least it did for me. I don't know, if, you, if you're running this on an IBM Blue GMP, then maybe it won't. But, yeah. Ridiculously, ridiculously powerful ship. It's crawling, crawling with guns. In case you didn't notice when we were actually above deck. Also, here is the secondary bridge that you, that you can evacuate your crew to. So, yeah. This is... It is just a secondary bridge. Not really much to talk about. I believe this over here may have something to do with actually sealing the top bridge off. So, or you can actually do that from any of these terminals here. So, yeah. It's just, like I said, in case you're under attack, you can just evacuate your crew down here it's not as quick or as uh, or as well it, it's not as quick or as well reliable or safe that guy disappeared for some reason it's not really as reliable or, or safe as it is as the system on the Vintersol where the where the where the bridge is literally on its own platform and you just press a button and then it drops down below deck. So, but I mean, it's, it's more convincing. It would be more convincing if you were attacking the ship. You could actually like get up close and see all the stuff inside. Although it would be a little bit hard to act, actually evacuate your crew in time. So let's go and make sure we didn't miss anything over here. I don't think we did. Let me just turn my jetpack here. I don't think we missed anything. Yeah, we actually missed a couple of things. Journalism, it's best, man. Oh, is this the med bay? Oh, this is another med bay. Well, I did not, I do not think I knew this existed. This is another med, med bay. So you've got a lot of capacity for healing your wounded uh, uh, healing your wounded crew members so yeah I think you could actually have a two four six eight uh, nine ten uh, uh, twelve 14 maybe wounded crew members at a time yeah let me go ahead and make sure that two four six eight ten 
12, yeah, 14 wounded crew members at a time, which is a sizable portion of the crew of the ship. So, if you if you screw up that badly, you're not very good. <laughs> you're just, you're not very good. Because this thing is so much firepower, and it's very, very nimble. It's a really, really nimble ship. So, yeah, and then over here you've got um, another captain's quarters thing here. And then over here, hmm, well, I believe, yeah, that's just the conveyor system. I believe that's where we actually came out. So, pretty, pretty awesome, pretty big ship. But I tell you what, when you fly it, it doesn't feel big at all. It feels about the size of Siri, and, well, she's pretty dang big, but it doesn't feel as big as it actually is. So, let me go up to the, well, I think we should actually just go ahead and go for it and just go straight up to the top deck, because the view out of that is absolutely awesome, and before I miss anything, this is right here a sort of crew area, um, well, not a uh, really crew area, it's just uh, where you could like change uniforms and stuff for work inside the ship, and then if we go over here, we've got another one. I would assume that it's, yeah, actually there's not another one on the other side of the ship. Yeah, I'm not very good at directioning, I completely forgot that we were actually in the middle and then over here, I haven't actually been here. Huh, this is cool. This, these are the bathrooms. You've got bathrooms in this ship for regular crew members. That's sick. Like, that's really legit. Look at this. Look at this. You can have... Uh-oh. Uh... Damn it, Joe! Why do we have a biohazard in one of the toilets again? Joe, come on. This is the third time this week we've had a biohazard in one of the toilets. Joe is such an idiot. Which one? Which one? Joe? Joe, Joe. Is it this one? Is it? Yep. Freaking, I, I smell radiation. I smell radiation. Joe, you are such a re freaking tard. I swear, I swear, I'm gonna have Joe's butt when this get, when this gets done, guys. I'm gonna have his butt on a silver plate. Joe, his name his name should be Billy. His name should be Billy. So go oh, screw you, Billy. Ah, uh, uh, but anyway, so you've got showers here that aren't quite as pleasant as in and in value as they should be because of the small of radiation, Joe, you freaking idiot. Ah, uh, mm. Or, you know, I wonder if it's not actually the fault of Hal because he is on this ship and, he, and he's evil and everything. He's probably trying to kill the crew. So, mm. whatever the situation is, it needs to be remedied now, I say. And then, well, it does appear that I actually missed quite a bit on my tour. So let's... Oh yeah, crew bunks back here. I was wondering where those were. So we've got crew bunks. I presume we've actually got a bunch of crew bunks. Like... Oh yeah, crew bunks. And I like the way, by the way, I like the way that it's actually combined with a mess. So it's almost like... The crew members have a private mess, like, in their crew quarters. That's cool. I've never seen that before on a ship. I, I didn't think anybody would ever actually come up with that, but then again, this is the Space Engineers community. It's a very, very creative community here. But that just seems, that's just a brilliant idea. I mean, think about it. You wake up, and you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner all on your own schedule because it's in your crew quarters 
the the mess is in your crew quarters. There's no discreet mess. So there's no discreet like eating shifts or anything. So just uh you're in your bed sleeping and then you wake up, turn off the TV, and then you say, Man, I'm hungry. Um what do we got over here? Some cereal, some raisin bran. I think I'll have the raisin bran. And then just get some stuff out of the drawers. And then uh, bake, your raisin, bake your raisin bran cereal. And then sit down over here and just have breakfast. And then uh, you, could you could come back here for lunch, grab a couple of hot dogs. Not do anything to them. Because everybody knows that you cook cereal. And do nothing to hot dogs and then just eat a, and then just sit down and eat that's really cool that's such a that just seems like such a good idea it's just like that's that's legit that's legit put on the sideways hat that's legit and then up here is well, what do we have I swear to you guys I thought I toured the entire ship before I started this but, so what do we have here? It looks like, hmm, well this is, this seems like the main oxygen management center. So, this is where the oxygen systems would be managed from. So, hmm, that's the first time I've ever actually seen one of those on a ship. Man, this, thing, this ship is just full of firsts. And just awesome ideas all around. I'm really impressed with this. I'm so impressed with this ship. It's just ridiculous. We've got another oxygen management center over here. And then... Is that it? No! We've got another door! Wow! Thing's huge. I said... I told you guys it's bigger on the inside than, the, than it is on the outside. And then over here we've got a whole bunch of small, uh, small, well, assemblers, really. Those are actually assemblers. So you could take stuff from, well, uh, you could take stuff gained from mining and then put in those assemblers and make stuff. I wonder where the mining equipment would go, though. This is a really weird space here just some storage you know just some shelves and lockers and um yeah uh uh crying welders i don't know what that is i don't know tools but yeah so just some storage stuff there and then up here what do we have is this another engineering bay no it goes up to the top of the ship. That's an airlock. I didn't even notice that that existed. This is an airlock. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. An airlock, like right there. And it's not easy to find either. Because I swear I would have never found that. Again, I was looking for a door. But then. We've got a battery core. I assume we've got actually multiple battery cores. Let me actually check that. No, it doesn't look like we have multiple battery cores unless there's another one on the other side of the ship. But let's actually go up to the um, let's actually go up to the bridge and try this thing out. I'll see you guys there. And this is the bridge. So, um, I believe this is the main cockpit here. Yeah. yeah, there's virtually no forward visibility. By the way, the glass is actually the diamond tech bonded glass that I reviewed. Was it last episode? I think so. I reviewed it sometime. And it's actually almost as... It's, it's actually almost as powerful or durable I should say is heavy armor it's ridiculously durable so you're not gonna get to this bridge in the first place but just in case someone does get to the bridge get and um, start destroying stuff in there 
you could have your crew down in like in the secondary bridge there so really well thought out that's that's actually what strikes me most about the ship I'm not being sarcastic it that's really what strikes me about is how well thought out it is how many how many just good ideas it seems to implement in total and by the way like I was telling you guys armed to the teeth look at all these guns look at all these guns it's got like I don't know how many guns but look at all of them look at all these guns it's got four rail guns on the top which just one well placed shot from a rail gun is instant death oh okay so if you see behind that rail gun there that's actually where that's actually where uh, the airlocks are so I did not notice those but if all souls you could just glitch through the glass <laughs> so on the bottom even more guns ridiculousness it's just arm to the teeth this thing is bonkers uh, yeah it's, it's just look at it. it's it's a knife with guns it's a knife with guns guys it's a knife with guns how can you not like a knife with guns a, a yellow black and silver knife with guns that's the most manly thing ever created. Sick. Oh yeah, and listen to it when it turns, by the way. Just listen to it when it turns, alright? Oh! Ha, 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 ha. Such power behind that sound! Listen to that! Whoa! Oh, ho, ho. It almost gives me a heart attack just listen to it. Honestly. Uh, it's... Oh, oh, so much power. So much power. Behind that song when you turn it. Oh, 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 the Galente has... The landing gear has separated on the Galente. Now it's smoking and flying backwards. And don't hit that gun! Ah, uh, it knocked the gun off. Dang it! How many guns does this thing have <laughs> anyway? I don't know, but... So that... Oh, we have torn a hole through the armor there. So if you want to know how to defeat the ship, just park another ship on top of it and then make it go really, really fast so it'll tear a hole through your armor. That's how you de defeat this Asia class heavy destroyer by Koenig's Cobra. Uh-oh. We've got a lock on. We've got a lock on on something. Gonna lock on on some ship. Was that? Was that? Okay. Um. Weapons. 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 Where are weapons? All guns on. All guns on. Get in range. Let's get in range here. Seven. All guns are on. What is that that we've got to lock on to? Is that my... What is that? I can't tell. Let's get in range and see what we've got here. That's way off. That's way, way far that way. We're gonna smack the asteroid if we don't slow down. Oh, we're gonna smack, we're gonna smack the motor viewing platform. Stop, stop. Oh, iner inertia dampeners. Thank you. Okay, so let's get in range here. Let's get in range. See what we got. It's trying to outmaneuver us. It's Invader. Guys, this is it. This is it. This is where we test out the might of the Asia class. Explorer. I hope I don't crash my game. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. I think it was that guy that... Um, I think it was that guy that was inbound. It's firing at us. It's firing at us. All right, come on. Let's go for a broadside. Hold on. Let me actually. Okay. 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 So let me. 
What are you? What are you? I don't know what you are! Whatever you are, you're causing my game to run like crap. Okay, okay, there you are, there you are. Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Let's get turned, let's get turned, let's get turned, let's get turned. This is tense, guys. This is tense. Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. Most tense moment ever. S stop, stop, stop. Get turned, get turned, get turned. Ah. Yeah, it, it's not very good at turning. Okay. Um, let's... here can we get turned can we get turned I don't want to destroy all my stuff on the mod viewing platform guys can we get turned that is the question all right is he gonna come for me all right let's see here we don't have a lot going on anymore hmm I think he's just pissed off. He's going away. Well, that's odd indeed. He just left. Like, he just said, Nope, I ain't going up against that. Uh-uh. And then just left. But to be honest, I don't blame him. Not one bit. Not one bit. Because look at these guns, man. Look at these guns. Ha-ha. <laughs> Okay, so I think we just won our first combat encounter on Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup by default. A little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, don't blame the guy for just bugging out and going home. Yeah, just this, this ship, this ship inspires fear in the heart of all it faces. So, yeah, well... That has been Space, Engin Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 8. Actually, I think I owe it to you guys to actually sign off with just a little bit of destruction. Because that was kind of disappointing, wasn't it? We didn't even get to fight. We had this guy, we had him locked on, and we didn't even get to fight him. So, I'm going to let you guys go with a little bit of ship on ship destruction it's probably gonna freeze my game though so um just in case it does i'm gonna end the recording here and then create another recording so just in case i can't actually bring you guys the ship on ship stuff if you like this video then go ahead and bitch slap that like button if you really really liked it and you want to see more go ahead and hit that subscribe button hey i've been mc zinman you've been awesome and i'll see you guys in the next video MCZ out. <laughs>